What's up, everybody? It's Miles Turner, the Indiana Pacers. You're listening to the Pacers Podcast. Be sure to follow at Pacers on Twitter. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Pacers Podcast, the only Australian NBA podcast with a bias towards the Indiana Pacers. Uh, coming to you for the first time in a little while at the start of the second half of the 2020-21 NBA season. And unfortunately, guys, we just witnessed a loss to the Los Angeles Lakers, which doesn't make any of us really happy. Uh, we lost by five points, 105 to 100. Domas Sabonis had his usual stat line these days, 20 points, 14 rebounds, eight assists. Malcolm Brogdon had a big first quarter and finished with 29 points. And uh, it's been a really tough couple of months to be a Pacers fan. We obviously haven't bought you an episode since, I think, late January. So it's been a good six weeks or so. Um, and... Uh, one of, uh, I guess, the reasons for that is it's been a real lack of motivation, I think, for all of us because it's been tough to watch the Indiana Pacers. Now, uh, we'll obviously be re- bringing you more episodes moving forward, but we've had a lot going on. And uh, one of the things that's un- been unfortunate about the last couple of months has been the pay- play of the Indiana Pacers. Justin, I'll start with you. Um, I know that uh, we were talking just before the episode. It's, it's getting... Uh, a little ridiculous in the clutch. Yeah, it is. Good to be back as well, guys. I know I've seen a lot of messages and DMs from Pace Warriors fans wanting us to record, so do apologise to all the fans wanting to listen. But yeah, like you mentioned, uh, Adam, it's been tough with the recent play of the team and everything else going on. So um, yeah, glad to be back. But yeah, it's just another loss that's um, terrible in the clutch, like I mentioned to you three before the show. Just embarrassing. Like It seems the last four minutes of the game, it's just like, oh, just do a Sabonis Brogdon pick and roll every single play and just see what happens and it's just too predictable um yeah it's you know every game's the same i don't even expect to win anymore i kind of watch and just laugh in the last few minutes and that's pretty sad i think alex if if i told you before the start of the season that our offense would effectively be brogdon sabonis and doug mcdermott then we probably would have seen this coming wouldn't we i mean yeah like you guys alluded to it's just and as Justin was saying, it's embarrassing really to watch. Can it's funny because we talked about this in the playoffs last year, didn't we? When we were losing those games, we talked about the paces being a chore to watch, right? Like yeah. it's not fun. We, we we wake up here in Australia normally and we're excited about paces basketball, but right now that's not the case, is it? And and you know it's just as Justin said, it's way too predictable on offense. Um, even with McDermott scoring well at the rim, you know teams know what they're getting. They're going to get it. Sabonis post up. Um, or they're going to get the pick and roll with Brogdon and Domas. And we saw that. The Lakers just clamped up in the fourth quarter, and that's why they're losing those games. There's no adjustments, which is similar to what we saw against the Heat in the bubble. I mean, we're, we're really... we're Too much is left to too few. And I think players like, you know, Justin Holiday, TJ McConnell, Jeremy Lamb, they're, they're doing, I think, what they can, but their limitations as NBA players are showing. And... You know, it's it's very easy, and I I don't think we're going to all sit here and say it's because we're missing our starting wings. I, I kind of want to say that because it's convenient and it's easy to to you know be able to explain away all of our issues. But um, it, it just doesn't seem to be that our bench having to step up has resulted in that sort of fight and fire that uh, that we saw potentially at the start of the season when uh, when Oladipo was still on the team. And, you know, whilst it's it's awesome to have Karis LeVert back, I can't wait to see him in a Pacers uniform. I've been waiting since the day the trade was announced. And we've been waiting since the American summer last year when we floated that that could be a possibility. We said this was one of the best uh, and one of, the, uh, one of our top possibilities for an Oladipo trade. But, Justin, back to you. I mean, it, this bench is nowhere near as good as probably what we thought or what we expected that it was um, on both ends, but particularly offensively. Yeah, you're right. I mean, we've we've mentioned as long as we've known each other that Pacers need to get more depth. Like the bench, TJ McConnell shouldn't be your best bench player. Like, yeah. you know, he shouldn't be coming in sparking. You know, that, I think what our last win was against Cleveland. We wouldn't have won that without TJ McConnell getting a triple-double, and it's yep. just embarrassing that you've got TJ McConnell being the spark so many times. You can't rely on a player like him. Um, so, yeah, it is very tough. And I, I was just thinking the other day, right, I was going to pose the question to you two because I actually don't have an answer, and it's pretty upsetting that, what are we, 36 games through the season now, and 
if someone had asked me, or I'll pose a question to you two, what, what's your favourite play of the season and game of the season so far? I don't know. Hey, I'm going to have to reach right back into the ar- archives for, uh, for that one. I mean, it's... Something should come straight to your head, right? I remember, yeah. see, you can ask me in 2015, I remember a game and a play and, you know, it's right now. Game, right? This sorry? season's got to be got to be the Pelicans game from earlier this season, I think. Yeah, and that, you know, it's upsetting because that was with Oladipo hitting that big three and being part of the team and Turner and everything like that. And you are right, Alex, that was what I concluded to. But, yeah, you know, it's pretty hard to kind of come up with a highlight of the season so far. And look, this is going to sound really bad, but... Um, they're just boring to watch. They Right now, they're just so boring. They don't have a player making highlight plays. You know, Brogdon and Sabonis do their thing. But, um, you know, I'm an NBA league pass junkie and watch other teams all the time. And, yeah, tuning into paces and then seeing other teams, it's night and day. Yeah, it's it's really disappointing. And I think it's, it's not the play that we've come to expect from this team over the last couple of years. And, you know, I think, we started off the season being pretty patient with Nate Bjorkren. Uh, we were aware of the fact that there were going to be more losses this season. Uh, I don't think anyone would have expected nor predicted that we would be sub 500 and four games out, out of 500 um, at this stage of the season, halfway through. Um, and that's it's re- that in particular is really concerning because you could throw a blanket over fifth to 12th in the Eastern Conference right now and if you have a bad month and we have a really tough month in terms of schedule, Alex, I mean, we, we could be staring down the barrel of 11th or 12th in the East by April Fool's Day. I think it could be worse than that, man. I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah. I look at the rest of our March schedule and uh, I maybe see two or three games that we can pull out right now. E- even with Levert coming back, I just think our schedule is that tough. We play Phoenix tomorrow, Brooklyn you know, at home, they're, they're not losing any games and it doesn't get any easier after that. So it's one of those things where the Pacers are only a few games ahead of 14th in the East. Yeah. That's that's insane to think about. Obviously, you know, the same thing goes, we're close to the eighth seed right now, aren't we? But I guess that's just how the East is. You drop a few games, as you said, and you could find yourself as one of the bottom teams in the, uh, getting a top five pick, which I just wanted to ask you guys about, is that it's to the point of the season where do you want the Pacers to scrape in and just get the eighth seed? Or do you want the Pacers to finish 12 to 14 and maybe get a five or six pick? I'll leave that to you guys. Well, Justin, we, we I know exactly what you're going to say and I'll say, I'll get in <laughs> first. Um, we know what they're going to do. So it doesn't matter what we want them to do. They're going to do everything they can to scrape into the playoffs. Are they not? Yeah, we, we know that as Pacer fans. And I was going to pose that question to you two today. It's a really interesting question. A question we've obviously dealt with it for years and years being Pacer fans, you know, eight C, they want to fight, fight to make the playoffs. But Adam, as you mentioned on our last recording, I think this is the year to do it without tickets and sales. The owner maybe says, hey, you know, should we take a step back to take a step forward next year? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I'd love a young prospect. It, it's just funny because this team on paper is so good enough to make the East, yeah, the East Finals. Like, yeah. It's pathetic, like Charlotte, Atlanta, Washington soon. These teams are not better than the Pacers. But, um, yeah, look, the record says they nearly are. So, pretty embarrassing. But, yeah, I'm nearly at the point where I don't mind if they don't make the playoffs because I don't think they deserve it. I, look, I, I'm i all on board with them not making the playoffs. I would prefer us to not make the playoffs this season for a couple of reasons. Firstly, you're right. We need a young prospect. The last young prospect we had was Goga. The one before that was, you know, Aaron Holiday. And picking late after the lottery hasn't worked out well for us. Um, we haven't been able to unearth OG Ananobi. We haven't been able to unearth the, the guys that you get late that can really contribute to your team in the first couple of years of their contract when they, when they kind of have to for you to be a, a contender. You need immediate output from those guys. The other thing is you look at our starting five, we've got, $100 million committed to our starting five next season. Now, there's no free agents coming to Indiana anyway, but we don't have any space for them regardless. So we've got, you know, Doug on an expiring deal. He's going to get paid, not by Indiana. Indiana aren't going to want to pay Doug $15 million a season for two years or something ridiculous like Doug will command, which, you know, fair enough. Good luck. But we need to, we need to make sure we shore up next year's roster. 
because at the moment this year's roster is not going to get it done and if it's not going to get it done why bother why bother being swept again what's the point i mean you know i i posted and you guys like the other way you can't get swept if you don't make the playoffs that's that's a foolproof plan but like what is the point finishing eighth and playing philly and getting swept what yeah. what's the point or you know taking philly to six games and we're all sitting here going wow so much fight we'll be so much better next year what's the difference between that and getting the eighth pick this season yeah. and actually getting a good young prospect to replace Doug McDermott, to replace TJ McConnell, because neither of them are coming back on the same money next year and we don't have a lot of money to sign them. So Alex, I, I just, I know that the Pacers want to win, but surely the way to win is to actually lose this year. I think you're right. Yeah. And you know, it, it especially hurts when you see obviously K, Kevin Porter Jr. had his locker room issues, but yeah. he dropped 27 points today. The Rockets got him for a second round pick. So you look at, you know, teams around the league getting these young prospects, if you will, for virtually nothing. And the Pacers don't do the same thing. That kind of sucks. And I just wanted to ask you guys as well. Another question is just on Doug McDermott. I think you're right. I, I think he's going to get paid this offseason. There's no chance the Pacers can afford him. Do you look to trade him? Or do you look to move a guy right. like Jeremy Lamb, who who right. hasn't been performing well lately? So I think we, you know, I hate to be beat a dead horse, but we always talk about wing defense on on the podcast, don't we? You yeah, we we always beat on about it, but it's because we need it. We see it every single game, don't we? The pace is Kuzma today. How many points did he have? Twenty twenty four or something? He, he tore yeah. us. So, you know, these wings, especially the the bigger wings, always kill the paces. So, do you look to move on some of those guys? I don't know who you can get for them. But I think you have to look at that if you're Kevin, if you're Kevin Pritchard right now. You have to start looking at the teams that aren't going to make the playoffs, like the Rockets, like the Kings, and you have to look at the longer term contracts that can be effectively your free agent pickups this season yeah. for next season. The the trade like the trade for Karis Levert was uh, effectively our free agency pickup this off season, getting Karis Levert in place of Victor Oladipo. That was our replacement. You have to be proactive with this stuff because Doug is going to walk. TJ McConnell is going to walk. And so they should. They will get paid because they can afford, they can get paid more and the Pacers can't afford to pay them significantly more. Um, so we have our starting five. So we need that. But we do need that sixth guy. We need the guy to be able to replace uh, Turner or Sabonis and play with the starting lineup. Uh, while one or, or you know one or the other has has a rest, has a spell, we need that player to be a good defender. We need a Harrison Barnes type. I know his name has been bandied around in in trade talks, but that's the sort of player we need to have as as our either our starting power forward or our backup power forward with Domas and or Turner playing alongside him. Like those those are the sorts of players that I uh, I think we need to target guys that are contracted after this season. Um, that we can get for for Doug, for Aaron Holiday, for TJ McConnell. I think anyone outside of the, the starting five should be on the trade table right now and Kevin Pritchard should be taking calls for every single one of them. Justin. Yeah, oh, even even the starters included. Like maybe not Brogdon for bonus, but everyone else, I'd, I'd probably put them on. Oh, yeah, maybe Levert as well. But um, yeah, it's um, you, you're probably right. I, I just, I, re- I really worry about, the preaching patience stuff. We've obviously said it for quite some time, but that message does wear thin. Um, I'm really worried about Kevin Pritchard at the end of the year saying it again. Like, I don't, I don't want to hear the injuries. I don't want to hear the new coach. Like, it, you can throw excuses out, but us Pacer fans, we've dealt with these excuses for quite some time. Yeah. Um, you know, we don't want to play off game in years and years, yet we're always competitive and a good team. So what's the direction of this team? We're, like, are we... We're not contending. We're we're not, you know, looking towards the future. We're literally just middle of the pack, and that's the worst place to be. Justin, um, there's an Australian saying: "We're there to make up the numbers." Yep, and that that's a hundred percent true, isn't it? We're there. We'll probably be between seventh and tenth, and you just do nothing either way. You can't get better, and it's the most frustrating spot to be in. The, the worst thing is, you, I'm watching a Pacers game now, and honestly, going, I don't even know if I want us to win or lose. Yeah, because. Yeah. yeah, because us three know losing is probably better long term, but you know, you still want to win watching your team play, but you probably know the end result's going to be getting swept in the playoffs. Yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, there is. I don't think there is one among us that believes that the paces as currently constructed with the situation that they find themselves in, TJ Warren either coming back from injury or not coming back at all, Karis Levert coming into a new team and back from injury, there is no way that we can get to the second round of the playoffs as currently in the current season. We could take a game off Brooklyn. We could take a game off Philly if we're fully healthy. But even then, why? What's the point? What, like, what, what is the value in that one playoff victory? Once again, you, you have, you know, 3,000 fans in the building. whoop de doo da Great. Mm-hmm. Alex, what, it's like, what justification could the team possibly have to continuing to try and push for seventh, eighth, and one or two playoff victories? Well, my thing is this season, I don't think they have a choice. Like, obviously, if you're Herb Simon and you're Kevin Pritchard, you want to win games, right? You want your team to win games. And I think they're trying to. I just think the paces are that bad right now that regardless of what they try or what they want, it's not going to happen, right? We're, we're, we've seen it the past couple of months. They're just not good enough to win these games, especially against good teams, which they're playing against. So, you know, we're having this conversation about should they tank or should they try to make the playoffs? I think regardless of what actually they want to do, it's not going to be their choice, is it? Especially the schedule in March, you know, as I alluded to earlier, they could win a game for the rest of the month. They could lose every single game for the rest of the month. That wouldn't surprise me. So, you know, I think it will get down to a point where there's no there's no choice for them. It's just they're straight up losing games. And, and I hate to be alarmist, but the other factor that we need to consider as a ball club is TJ Warren's going to get paid in about 18 months. He's he's coming out of contract next year. I think he makes $12.5 million. He's going to command at least $20 million a year. If, Tar- if Harrison Barnes is getting 22, then TJ Warren will be worth at least that um, if fully healthy and back to where he was. I mean, if he's in the bubble, then he's in the conversation for more than that, for, you know, $100 million over four years. So his, his contract may double. So at some point you need to make a decision on, are you willing to pay him those that money? Or do you need to make a decision? And, you know, your decision is, you pay TJ Warren, potentially you trade Miles Turner or Domas Sabonis in order to do it. That, that's the sort of decision that this team is going to have to come down to. Because the other thing that we know about this team is that unless they are first in the East with a commanding lead, there is no way that they pay the luxury tax. No. I mean, there's there's actually no, no chance and, and no likelihood that they dip into the luxury tax. So, you know... Uh, I, I just can't see a way out of the current situation. I, I can tell you what I think is going to happen, and that is that Karras will come back. We will start to win a couple of games. TJ will, Warren will come back. We'll win a few more games. We'll push, we'll push, we'll push. We'll sneak into eighth position, get like the 15th pick in the draft, and get swept. Justin, any lies there? No, nah, maybe, maybe 4-1 in the playoff series. That's all. Maybe not spent. They might win a playoff game, but it's yeah. exactly right. I'll tell you what, oh, if they play Brooklyn in the first round, we will be nationally, worldwide embarrassed. I don't even want to see that series. I mean, we lost to them by, what, 40? Oh, we were down 40 to Brooklyn the other week with no KD. Um, it, I don't even want to watch that series if we face Brooklyn in the first round. They would absolutely torch us. Um, and yeah, you're right, Adam. That that's probably going to happen. So um, yeah, I don't know. The, the the one thing I'm looking forward to is Levert playing against Phoenix. Like, hopefully he can bring some highlights and some you know good basketball to watch to the team. I'm excited to watch him. But um, yeah, there's not much to look forward to in probably the next six months being a Pacer fan. I think and. Yeah, it's sad. Like, we all mentioned Oladipo. We all wanted him gone. But kind of since then, yeah, paces have just been terrible to watch. Well, this has been cathartic. I think uh, it's uh, it's not the tone that we usually strike in our podcast, but I think we had to vent to our listeners in our return because I'm sure everyone that's listening to this podcast feels exactly the same way that we do. So uh, we will try and be a lot more positive next time. I got through an entire podcast without mentioning NBA Top Shot, which is how I've spent my last (laughs) two months. Uh, And I'm glad it's finally gone mainstream. I just wish my portfolio would continue to rise as it was a month ago. 
And uh, guys, it's this has been the pace for us. This has been fun. We're glad to be back with you. We're going to be coming to you a whole lot more frequently. And uh, go paces, maybe go paces. Anyway, see you next time.